President Napolitano, welcome. Thank you. This has been a tough few years for the University of California, budget cuts, tuition increases. This week you had some rare good news and you're proposing freezing tuition for the coming year, but you need some help from Sacramento. What do you need, what do you want Sacramento to do to make that happen? Uh, what we would like is for Sacramento, for the state to be a real partner with the university. Uh, we would like Sacramento to uh, adopt the, the uh, governor's budget, which requests or will request another 5% for the university, and to treat the university uh, with respect to pension the same way it, it treats the state university and the community colleges. And that would help you out to the tune of how much? Do you oh, have any idea? A, it, lot of, a lot. It would be quite helpful. We're going to fight for the tuition freeze, not just for this year, but I want to look at tuition policy overall and our cost structure overall so we can really look long term, not only at amount, but the volatility of tuition. The state's commitment to the budget of UC is it's about 10% right now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been dropping, not just because of the economy and budget cuts, but there seems to be a shifting priority away from the university. That's my interpretation. Do you see it that way? How concerned are you? Well, I, I, as I said earlier, I think that the state needs to be a partner, recognizing that, you know, California thrives uh, on the fact that it has all this intellectual and creative firepower here. It's, it's a, such a big, diverse state. So much goes on here. Um, but California will thrive even more if the university is thriving. There's a direct connection between those things. Is there a concern, do you think? Uh, the university is a, is a terrific institution. There are Nobel Prize winners. There are Lots of books are written by professors who are on national and international TV. Is there, is there a risk, do you think, of appearing almost too elite, uh, that uh, the legislature uh, that represents a lot of low-income folks may not be able to relate to the needs of the university? Well, uh, l let's back it up and say uh, we, sh we are not elitist in that way. And in fact, uh, almost what, 40, 42 percent of our students uh, get Pell Grants. They're from lower income families. Another 20 percent pay less than half of what uh, the tuition is. So the doors of the university are wide open. I think we don't advertise it as well as we should. And many of those kids and their families don't even know that they're eligible for those grants. Oh, that's right. I've been to several high schools and asked for a show of hands. How many knew that if their family made $80,000 a year or less, they, they would pay no tuition at the university? And hardly anyone knows that. Uh, so, so they write off the university as a possibility. And they do it early, you know, ninth, 10th grade. So they're not taking the prerequisite classes because remember, it's not elitist, but it is academically challenging. And so the students to succeed at the university have to be prepared coming out of high school. You uh, have uh, not been met with uh, open arms by everyone uh, since you've come to California. There have been some protests, uh, students uh, in particular upset about the immigration policies, the deportations when you were Secretary of Homeland Security. Do they have a point? Do you understand where they're coming from? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the plain fact of the matter was is, is that I as you know, I was as the Secretary of Homeland Security, the in Chief Enforcement Officer for the nation's immigration law. Um, we d we were moving and doing things we could administratively to make that law more fair. Uh, I created, for example, the Deferred Action uh, Program so that young people uh, could register and 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 be allowed to stay in country and to get work authorization. Uh, and I was very active with the administration in trying to get overall immigration reform. But uh, in the end, I took that oath of office and I was charged with enforcing the law. One of the first things you've done since you came to California is to set aside some $5 million to help undocumented students with uh, all kinds of resources. Tell me, you know, wh what's the importance of that? And, and how do you square that with the policy that you had to enforce as uh, Secretary of Homeland Security? Well, uh, a couple of things. One is they already qualify for in-state tuition. Uh, so uh, they are in the, the student body, but they can't get the federal grants and work study that their uh, colleagues can get, that the peers can get. So we want to provide some support if we can for that. Many of them will be DACA eligible. And what does that mean? De deferred action. Uh, it's an immigration term basically meaning that you can be lawfully in the country and work in the country. You've uh, indicated that you want to remake the university in some ways. Looking ahead five years, what do you see? What would you like to see different than what is existing now at the University of California? Well, uh, I want to honor the traditions and the 
and a really great history of the university, but uh, this is the 21st century, so we need to have tuition as low and predictable as possible. We need to smooth the transfer of community college students. We really need to be working on how the research done in our laboratories uh, moves into the world and can really be addressed to some of the fundamental problems that we face as a society. So those are the things that we want to drive the university toward. Before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. I know, know that as governor, uh, you are a huge Arizona Diamondbacks fan. Yes. <laughs> now you're in California and uh, you know they're in the same division with uh, the Padres and the Dodgers and the Giants. So I, I, I've brought with me a giant <laughs> very good <laughs> and i want to see like where are your loyalties are you going to be rooting for the giants or the dodgers or the padres uh what do you think oh, well i'll tell you what i'll root for uh the giants the dodgers and the padres in every game they're playing except against the d-backs <laughs> okay fair enough i thought you might say no but i'll, I'll root for the oakland a's <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right divided loyalties there you go all right thank you so much for coming in appreciate it thank you